Hello, in this video I'll be showing you how to use a library called Web3 React in order to connect users to MetaMask or any wallet from your front end. My plan is to show you the most simple implementation possible. Uh, it will look like this, where you have a button where you can connect to your wallet, you can disconnect. When you connect, it simply connects and then shows the wallet address that you're connected to. Just as an example, a more complicated implementation would look like this. It would have persistence where if you refresh the page, you stay connected to the wallet and the dApp itself would most likely interact with smart contracts. And of course, for this tutorial, you need to be connected to MetaMask wallet. In order to start, I'll just create a simple Next.js application. So to do that, I'm gonna do yarn create next app. And then I'm gonna name the project web3 react example. And you can use yarn or npm, either works. The first thing that I'd like to do is get the visuals prepared. So I'm gonna go into pages and then index.js. And of course, I'm just going to get rid of all this junk. And don't need this. And then uh, I guess first things first, let's create a button. And in that, just say connect to MetaMask. And so that this doesn't look too terrible, I'm going to use Tailwind CSS to make it look slightly better. But CSS is not important for this tutorial, so I'm just going to skip past that part. We'll also want to add some text that says not connected when that is the case for the wallet and connected with address when it is connected. But for now, we just want to leave it as not connected until we implement the logic in just a bit. So just a span that says not connected. Now let's add the connector. So first let's just add a new folder called components. Add a new folder again inside of that called wallet. And then in here, just create a new file and call it connectors.js. So this is actually a good point to install the Web3 React dependency that allows you to connect to MetaMask. So install it like this, so yarn add, and I'm actually just going to copy it over. So Web3 React slash injected connector, and then install that. You can think of a connector as the thing connecting you to a certain wallet. So this injected connector is for MetaMask, but there are others like the Wallet Connect connector and the Portis connector. Now the only thing that's really needed in here is that you need to import it and then export a connector object. So. I'm actually just going to paste this in because it's so simple. So like I said, you import the injected connector here and then you create a new injected connector object right here. Uh, when it comes to this, I don't feel like I can give a good enough definition personally. So if you want to know what chain IDs are, just Google something like crypto, what are chain IDs? Now go back to index.js and you want to import that injected connector. So you can probably just say injected and then I have it where it'll auto import like that. So now that that's imported, let's also create a function inside our component here and let's call it connect. You can also call it whatever you want, it doesn't really matter. And then our button down here which says connect to MetaMask, simply unclick. We want that thing to connect. 
Although, in order to connect the wallets, we need to install the core dependency. So, I'm just gonna copy and paste that again. And if you wanna know where you can like easily copy and paste all this stuff that I'm copy and pasting, there's a blog version of this tutorial and it'll be in the bio. So, just add yarn add web3 react slash core. And you will also need either web3 or ethers. I myself use web3, so yarn add web3. To understand where I figured all this out, it's legit just all in the documentation. I'll also leave a link to that in the bio below. Next, we need to set up the provider. So go to app.js, and then we need to import two things, which is this. So we're importing a Web3 React provider, which is really important. And then Web3, which of course is also important. Uh, so now let's create a function not inside the component and let's call it git library. It takes in a provider and it returns a new Web3 object that also takes in that same provider. And now we're just going to use this. So I'm just gonna parentheses here, make this look a little bit better. And then I'm going to use our Web3 React provider. And you just wanna wrap that as the topmost element in your application, like so. But also you don't wanna forget, you wanna add git library as a prop, like so. So now that you've done that, you have access to all the values that you need. So save that, go back to index.js, and then you can use a new hook. You can use the, um, actually, let's see, let's see, I can, I can probably auto import it. So it's called use web3 react. And you see it was auto imported right there. And what you can do with that, is you can get all kinds of different values. So you can get active account. I'll explain these in just a second. Uh, library connector activate and deactivate. There might be more than that, but that's the ones that I've mainly used. So active is just saying, is there a wallet actively connected right now? Account, that's legit just the blockchain address. Library is either web3 or ethers, depending which one you used in app.js. Connector is the current connector. So when we connect, it will be the injected connector for our example here. Activate is just the method to connect to the wallet and deactivate is the opposite to disconnect from the wallet. So inside the connect function, we're going to use that activate function here. And it's gonna need to do some uh, asynchronous behavior. So make that an async function. Let's do a try and catch block. I guess you technically don't have to do this, but it's probably good practice to do it. And then in the try block, just say await, activate, and we want to use our injected connector. And that's pretty much all it is. You click connect, it calls the activate, function and that's what will connect you. Simple as that. However, at the moment, it would just connect but not show the user is connected visually. To do that, we have to do some simple conditional templating. So if the user's wallet is connected or active, then show their address, otherwise not connected. So we've done part of it right here. Uh, we can just wrap this like that. 
we can say if active, and then let's put another span and inside here we can just say connected with and then I'm gonna put this in bold and I'm gonna say the account and that is it so if it's active you're connected with this address otherwise say not connected I'm also going to add a disconnect button and function it's implemented exactly the same way as connect, so I'm just going to speed this process up. Okay, cool. So everything is implemented, let's test it out. Let's say yarn dev, this will start the local server. And then this was a prior server, so let's refresh. It should look just like that still though. Oh, looks like I forgot some styling. Give me one second. That should do it. Yep. And with that, users can now connect and disconnect their wallet to this application. After this, all sorts of crazy things can be done, like sending tokens or interacting with smart contracts, which is what opens up a world of possibilities. If you have any questions, leave them below or hop into the Discord and I'll help you out personally. And if this helped you out, then feel free to like and subscribe and I'll see you next time.